Grab and goes. 
Yeah, thank, thank Adam for the wire because he, he donated that and it's not cheap.
much you love us, comforting and carrying us in your arms, and that you would never forget us. You know each of us like a mother knows her own children. David wrote, in your presence, he was quiet and at peace, trusting God like a child safe in the loving arms of his mother. Jesus spoke of himself as a mother, longing to wrap his arms around us like a mother hen gathers her chicks under her wing. And Paul writes about his missionary ministry and likens his works to that of a nurse who looks after those in her care. We rejoice this day and call you loving Lord and thank you for your tender care. Let us join together in prayer as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
Thank you, Jesus, for this table you prepared for those who believe. The bread that sits on this table is a reminder to us the suffering your body received before and on that cross, a price you paid for our salvation. Also, it reminds us that we are the body of God who lives in us. Let us honor your love for us, for you, by bringing others back. In your precious name, amen. Let's continue with the prayer of the cup. We all know our blood's important, and without it, we can't live. And like our blood, we need for life on earth. The sacrifice of Jesus and his spilled blood gives us new life and an eternal walk with God. So as we take this cup, let us remember that while our blood gives life to this body, Jesus' blood gives everlasting life. <laughs>
everybody on the count of three. Let's say Happy Mother's Day. One, two, three. Happy, happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Take some time this morning to go before the Lord in prayer, and if there's any prayer requests today, let's honor those by sharing with the body of Christ one with another. Anyone this morning? Paul. Oh. I just want to add, uh, we have a woman in this church that don't have their own children, but they raise our kids right alongside us in the faith. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes, indeed. We thank God for our, our spiritual mothers as well. Absolutely. And sometimes, um, you know, they are just as important, you know, especially if um, moms are not uh, teaching their children in, in the Lord. And we thank God for uh, church mothers that are raising the children as well. Others this morning? a special day for all moms and um, whether your mother is here today or uh, your mom has gone on to be with the Lord. Before we pray, I just want us to take a, a moment of silence to be able to um, thank God for all of our moms and um, even as uh, Paul had mentioned, you know, our spiritual mothers, you know, many of them in this church right here helped raise our children in Sunday schools, youth groups, and so on. Um, loving God. Indeed, we could pause for a moment, but that moment is so brief. So brief to thank you for the gift of all of our mothers. Lord, each and every day is a special Mother's Day. And it's nice that we can celebrate a special day in our nation for our dear mothers. Many of our moms, Lord, have carried the torch given us so much love and compassion and education, and um, sometimes we don't know where to begin to, to thank you for them. And so today, Lord, um, is an opportunity for those that are still alive today, Lord, to make sure we treat them very special and tell them how much they mean to us. Father, today, Lord, we pray that you would just bring all of us here together today as body of believers to be able to worship in spirit and truth and come to you at this time to pray for one another. Lord, this is a very important part of our Sunday morning worship, and that's prayer time. We don't all lift our hands, but Lord, all of us have something that we have need of or we know somebody. And so, Lord, today we pray, Lord, for one another. We pray for the Canaan family and connect passing of their loved one today. And Lord, there's a mother right there at uh, going to be 94 years old. Lord, uh, with a long life. And so we pray for the children. We pray for her son. And, and we ask God that you bring peace uh, to this family now in the passing of her. Lord, we pray for uh, the 
has spoken needs that she has. And we ask God that you minister to that need and we would meet that need. Lord, uh, for Brian, a friend of Atlantis, Lord, um, who has this veneer sickness, Lord, and we need, uh, we ask for your help, oh God, in, um, as he's experiencing a dizziness. We lift up also John Stevens, Lord, who is uh, having pain um, in, the, in the foot. We ask God that you would just uh, be right there touching John's feet, bringing healing to even the unknown. We believe that you are a God that can heal us from the crown of our head, uh, crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Lord, minister this morning to Mark, oh God, and the Parkinson's disease that he battles each and every day. Lord, you speak healing to his mind and body, Lord, and a special touch on Debbie. Together this morning, Lord, we come together to worship Jesus Christ, who is the center of our faith. You're the reason that we're here today. And so, Lord, once again, we thank you. Move in this place. Speak to our hearts through your holy word. And use me as your servant, as your disciple, to speak your truth. The words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For indeed you are our Lord and strength and redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Together, God's people say, Amen. 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 Praise God. If you have your Bibles this morning, let's open them up to the Gospel of St. Matthew this morning. And this Mother's Day, we're going to look at a woman um, who was a mother and had a child that was severely troubled by uh, a demonic spirit. And we're going to see in this particular story the mother's trouble, the mother's testing, and of course, a mother's triumph. And, uh, today, I probably uh, am not speaking to one mother, but to all mothers. You know that in your road uh, on motherhood, that you've experienced uh, a lot of troubles raising your children, uh, uh, a lot of testing. And I think we could say, moms, right now, amen to that, Pastor. Right. And so let's look at the scripture and the story this morning from Matthew's Gospel, starting in chapter 15, verse 21. It says, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is gravely vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. In the King James Version, if you didn't notice. So, we see Jesus speaking unto this woman who is troubled with her daughter being possessed by a demon. We know that the Word of God places very strong emphasis on faith. And we've talked a lot about faith here at this church. We know that salvation is by faith in Christ. As the scripture says, he that believes on the Son has everlasting life. And not only are we saved by faith, but we are exhorted to walk by faith and not by sight. So in the review of these scriptures, you know, building up this morning, hopefully, faith in all persons here today, because we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so the scripture over in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world. I'm going to switch over to my pulpit mic because this other mic is giving me a little bit of problem. If you turn this up a little bit, the pulpit mic. And so the scripture says, 
in 1 John chapter 5, verse number 4, it says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Jesus said, Great blessings belong to those who have faith. If thou can believe, say it with me, all things are possible to him that believes. And so in our prayer life, you and I must have faith. In our prayer life, we must have faith. Over in the book of James, James speaks by the Spirit of the Lord. He says, But let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave on the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. And he says, Don't let that man think that he will receive anything. So faith is the indispensable element in our relationship with God. For the scripture says in the book of Hebrews, he says, and without faith, say it with me, it is impossible to please God. It's impossible to please God. He says, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. How many know the scripture that is in the word? God says, the fool has said in his heart, there what? Is no God. And so if we look at this particular scripture, it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So in this story that we're going to see here is a story of a mother's faith. And it says it is the divine record of the accomplishment of faith. If we can look intently into this story, the story is given in three parts. As you saw in the title of my sermon, a mother's trouble, a mother's testing, and a mother's triumph. And so the tr trouble of a child is, how many know, is a mother's trouble as well. Moms, you can attest to that and say amen, right? So this woman of Syrophoenicia had a daughter vexed with the devil, possessed with the devil. And this was the worst sort. Thinking about, you know, all of our children, and we probably have seen many children. We thought, man, they must have a devil in them. So though this child had a terrible, terrible sickness, how many know this mother loved this child unconditionally, just like you as a mom. No matter what your child does, the wrongs that they may have done, you're still going to love that child regardless. And so afflictions, listen to this, do not dissolve affections. Afflictions do not dissolve affections which we have for our children. And so rather often affection grows where there is trouble. When you see your trouble child and you see that they have a problem you know your affection your compassion grows even more at least it should and so the heart cry i believe of a mother is given in verse 25 if you look back here in this story it's where she came and worshiped the lord saying lord help me and so in her need she prayed to the point she experienced no difficulty in expressing her need and her heart's desire. And so that's what I want to encourage all moms here today, to do not hold back in a time of need. And how many know that the Lord is the present help in a time of our need? Can the church say amen to that? So we see this mother, she's in serious trouble. Her child is in serious trouble, and she is the one who's going on behalf of her child, as any good mom would, take my child, taking my child to the doctor, making sure that my child gets the best of care. And her child was sick. And so it was wise for this mother to turn to the Lord. And I want to encourage the church today. I want to encourage every mother in a time of need, turn to the Lord. Amen? Turn to the Lord. Next comes this mother's testing. In this particular story here today, not only was there a trouble, but there was a testing of her faith. This mother had great faith, but she also faced great testing. And so she made her cry to Jesus, but how many saw in this particular story that Jesus did not answer her right away? The answer didn't come to her right away, even when she was asking the Lord for her help, for his help. And so there were many things that were going to test this woman's faith. And so we see first, the first test was the Lord's silence. She cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. And the record says he answered her not a word. You see, but Jesus' silence was 
not unconcerned. In other words, the Lord sometimes delays his answer in our prayers in order to test, then to establish our faith. You see, he was testing her faith, as sometimes is the Lord's method in all of our lives. Remember the story how Jesus put clay on the blind man's eyes and told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam? You see, Jesus could have easily healed with the word, but he believed in giving a test to the faith. And oftentimes, it's exactly what Jesus does in our own lives. He gives us a test. It was so with Mary and Martha. If you remember the story when their brother Lazarus died, Jesus delayed and they wondered at his absence when Jesus didn't come right away in his silence. But finally, Jesus shows up on the scene. And of course, we all know the story. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And there was the mighty resurrection of Mary and Martha's brother. The second part of this woman's testing came from the disciples that followed the Lord, those who were so close to Jesus and for many years and saw him do many miracles and taught them many things. But his disciples came to Jesus and said to Jesus, send her away because she is bothering us. Between the silence of Jesus and the lack of compassion of his followers, I would see that her faith was tested severely. You see, oftentimes the conduct, and I say this not to us particularly, but in these particular stories that we see, the conduct of the Lord's disciple is more likely to drive away than to attract. And oftentimes that can be the same with us. You know, when something is bothering us, we don't want to deal with it. We don't want to deal with the problem. But you see, the disciples did not understand the Lord's silence as well. Surely we see in the story that Jesus makes a statement to the disciples in verse 24. He says, I was sent, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Surely that was Jesus' first mission to come to the Jews. And the Gentiles and, and the Samaritans, they were secondary in class to the Jews. And Jesus even uses a word, if we look down into the story in verse 26, after the woman came and worshipped him and asked him to help her, he said it's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And I thought about those strong words, dogs, little dogs. But Jesus wasn't speaking in a condescending method. He wasn't a racial slur to no extent, but he came primarily to the house of Israel first, and that was his mission to fulfilled. It wasn't that Jesus didn't have compassion on this woman, but yet we see the persistence of this woman, and if we look in the very next verse, verse 27, she says to the Lord in response, yes, Lord, but yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Amazingly, Jesus is amazed at her faith, her persistence. And I looked at this woman, I looked at the story of this woman as I studied it, and the woman possessed two powerful characteristics, humility and faith. Downright, I respect any woman who is humble, is a humble woman, and a woman of faith. And these are two qualities that I see in this particular woman. She was a woman who was willing to take a humble place. And she was also a woman who was persistent in her faith. She had a faith that was unwavering. And in the end, she received more than she asked for. She was commended by the Lord for her faith. Jesus said these words, O woman, say with me, 
great is thy faith. Great is thy faith. And he said, be it unto you as thou wilt. The Bible says her daughter was made whole that very now. Here is the real encouragement for mothers who have been praying, praying long. And it's important that we see here that there was a triumphal end to this story. She was rewarded by the healing of her daughter. More mothers who will bring to God their troubles and their needs, I believe, of their children, there will be more sons and daughters saved today. Teaching our children, raising our children up in the way they should go. The Bible says, train a child in the way he should go, for when he is old, what? He will not depart from it. We need to train our children up in the ways of the Lord the ways of righteousness, to mold them into the right people. And I can imagine this young child who was vexed with this demonic spirit saw the great faith of her mom, who prayed, who had love and compassion as any good mom would, and did whatever she could do to make sure that she could get the answer that she needed for her daughter. You see, Jesus kept his mother waiting for a time period. But Jesus did come through. Just like Jesus will always come through. Can the church say amen to that? Faith was the key that unlocked the blessings which she needed. And so encouragement to all mothers here today, church, to continue to pray for that son, that wayward child. Continue to pray for that daughter or who are still walking in the ways of sin. Maybe we have adult children today that have not yet turned to the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Galatians, Be not weary in doing good, for in due season, let's say it together, we shall reap if we what? Faint not. Jesus said to this woman, Woman, great is your faith. She took a humble place, even when she was talked to as almost being a little dog, pushed aside. In the Lord's silence, the Lord was testing this woman. But she persisted. She persisted for the love of this child. And today, you as well, moms, continue to persist in praying for your children. Grandmothers, pray for your grandchildren now as you know, we are grandparents. We are already praying for our grandchildren. And it is important that they know the Lord. It's important that they see the Lord in you. Because now you have the responsibility of passing down the faith of this word that we study and truly believe in. So that they too, our children, our grandchildren, can see the faith of their parents, their grandparents, and all. Amen? Let's bow our heads together today. Father, we just thank you today. As we have come in this part of this service to thank you once again for your word, the story today of the woman who had great faith, who was a woman who humbled herself, a woman who was tested great in her faith, but she persisted. She loved her child so much and wasn't going to stop until she was healed. Today, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the moms that have constantly prayed for months, for years on end. And Lord, I know at times we may not see the answer right away. But Lord, you were silent for a reason. Faith has a great work because it is how you operate. It is how you move. You are a rewarder to those who diligently seek you. And so it is my prayer this day, Lord, for all mothers, Lord, that you would just bless them richly, that you would encourage them, Lord, when they go through their trials, 
troubles their testing. Lord, let this story speak to them today, Lord, of how triumph can come through faith. Today, Lord, as we leave this place, we leave, Lord, in faith. We leave humbled people. We leave, Lord, with patience. But we also leave knowing that the answer is coming all in due time. For we do not grow weary in doing good. For we shall reap. We shall reap in that due time. Today, Lord, bless your people and those today, Lord, that are watching via Facebook and YouTube, especially the moms today, Lord. May a sweet day be given to all of them. May they be encouraged for the love and compassion that they have given to their children. Yes, Lord, even our spiritual mothers, those who have taken the time to, to teach our children in Sunday schools, in youth groups, to give our children the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for those who have taken care of these children throughout their tenure. We ask, Father, today, God, that you would richly bless them all. Today, Lord, as we leave this place, we leave with your peace and your joy, all because of Jesus Christ. And now we continue to worship you in our closing song. You are awesome in this place. In Jesus' name we pray together, God's people say, amen. And let's stand together in the house of the Lord. Let's worship the Lord today.
close in benediction today. Moms will just ask you to come on down front. Um, I know we're doing the social distancing and all that. Um, but can we all bow our heads together today? I'd just like to have a special prayer for you know our moms today. Father, we do thank you, Lord, for the gift of motherhood. We thank you, Lord, for their love, their compassion. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the relentless love that they give to each and every one of their children. Lord, we thank you for our moms that have raised us up in the way that we should go, training us up in the ways of God. We thank you, Lord, for our spiritual moms. Lord, taking the time out to be a Sunday school teacher, to be a youth group leader, to be there for someone, Lord, that needed guidance and a hug. Lord, as we celebrate Mother's Day today, Lord, it is with our deepest thanks. Lord, we thank you for each and every one of our moms. Bless them richly, Lord, and those that have gone on to be with you, God, we once again say thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and together, all of God's people say, Amen and Amen. Praise God. Happy Mother's Day. Don't forget your flowers. Come on down.